Okay, so quarter 3, nasa week number 4 na tayo ng ating lesson. At ang ating learning activity sheet para sa week number 4 ay uploaded and posted sa ating Google Classroom. Bago tayo mag-start sa ating new lesson, recall muna natin yung pinag-aralan natin nung nakaraang linggo. Recall time. Simulan natin sa first statement na to. It is a term used to describe two objects with the same shape and size. Ano kaya ang tinutukoy rito? So, ito ay congruency. So, pag sinabing congruency, it refers to the same shape and size. Next, what symbol is this? Anong symbol ito? Ayan, ang tawag dito ay similarity. Pag sinabing similarity, it refers to the same shape. How can you tell if two triangles are congruent? Tulad nito. Remember, if the corresponding parts of two triangles are congruent, we can now tell that the two triangles are congruent. We refer this to CPCTC or corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now, name the corresponding vertices of this figure. So, meron tayong dalawang triangles, triangle ABC and triangle DEF. We actually say that this, the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. At ito yung pinag-aralan natin nung nakaraang linggo. So, we have from triangle ABC, vertex A corresponds to vertex D from triangle DEF. Vertex B corresponds to vertex E. C corresponds to F. If the vertices are or correspond to one another or to the other vertices of the other triangle, we can say that the two triangles are congruent. Now, name the corresponding sides. So, based on the markings... We can say that side AB corresponds to side DE. Side BC corresponds to side EF. Side CA corresponds to side FD. Hindi po pwedeng magbaliktad yung mga sides. Let's say side AB corresponds, ang sunulat ninyo ay side ED. Hindi po. Kasi kung babalikan natin yung ating corresponding vertices kanina, ang A nakakorespond siya sa D at ang B nakakorespond siya sa E. So, hindi pwedeng magbaliktad. Kung magkakorespond ang bawat isa, ibig sabihin congruent ang mga sides. Pag sinabing congruent, kung anong sukat ng AB, Yung sukat ng haba ng AB ay ganun din ang sukat ng side DE. And so on. Ngayon, corresponding angles naman. So, gaya ng vertices, ganun lang din ang gagawin nyo. Si angle A corresponds to angle D. Angle B corresponds to angle E. Angle C corresponds to angle F. May tanong? Kung wala, pwede na tayong dumako sa ating new lesson. So, nasa triangle congruence pa tayo. At ang ating learning targets para sa araw na to, we can recognize congruent figures and their corresponding parts. Prove triangles congruent using SSS and SAS as well as ASA and AAS. Let's begin. Remember that the two geometric figures with exactly the same size and shape, we have the, the definition of congruent polygons. Okay? So, polygons are uh, refer to geometric figures, close geometric figures. Okay? So, having the congruent corresponding parts, their matching sides and angles. So, when you name congruent polygons, you must list corresponding vertices in the same order. 
Gaya na nakikita nyo example sa screen. Corresponding parts, if all six pairs of corresponding parts, so yung tinutukoy niya yung sides and angles, are congruent, then the triangles are congruent. Base sa ating pinag-aralan nung nakaraang linggo at sa ating recap. Ayan. Ngayon, do you, you, do you need all six? Or kailangan ba nating lahat yon? Yung corresponding parts na yon, yung anim na yon, yung corresponding angles and corresponding sides. The answer is no. So hindi natin kailangan lahat yon. Ngayon, diyan napapasok yung iba't ibang klase ng postulates and theorem. So meron tayong SSS, SAS, ASA, AAS. So isa-isahin natin. Simulan natin sa SSS or side side side. So, basis sa postulate na to, if the three sides of one triangle are congruent to the three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So, obvious na obvious yung ibig niya sabihin. So, kung dito, basis sa ating dalawang triangle, uh, triangle ABC at triangle GEF, basis sa mga markings na nakikita niyo sa screen, we can say that the side AB is congruent to side DE since they are they both both have single marking. BC corresponds or congruent to side EF. AC is congruent to side DF. So based on the three sides which are congruent to the other three sides of the other triangle, we can say that the two triangles are congruent. So, this is how the SSS occurs. So, example of this, okay, using the side, 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 or SSS, AB is congruent to DE, BC is congruent to EF, AC is congruent to DF. So, based on this, we can say and prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now, another new term for this is we have included angle. So, pag sinabing included angle, these are the angle or this is the angle between two sides. So, pinapagitnaan siya ng dalawang sides. Halimbawa, dun sa unang figure... Meron tayong isang marking at dalawang markings or double marking. So, from here, we have two sides, side IG and side GH. At ang included angle dyan ay, ayun, that is angle G. On the second figure, meron tayong side GI and side HI at ang included angle dyan ay, eto, at ang included angle ay, angle I. At dun sa pangatlong figure, Meron tayong dalawang sides at ang included angle ay ito. Pangalan niyan ay angle H. So, yan po yung ibig sabihin ng included angle. The angle between two sides. So, saan ba natin gagamitin si included angle? So, gamit ang postulate na side angle side or SAS postulate. If two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent, to the two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Example natin. So, yung side AB is congruent to side DE. So, that is the first side. Next, since nakikita ninyo na merong included angle there, na yung angle A is congruent sa angle D, at ang ating pangatlong side ay yung side AC congruent siya sa side DF, we can say that the two triangles, the triangle ABC is congruent sa triangle DEF. Next, if meron tayong included angle, meron din tayong tinatawag na included side. So, ano naman tong included side? The side between two angles. So, dito sa ating first figure, meron tayong angles G and I. At ang included side dyan, yung pinagigitnaan ng dalawang angle, angles, ay ang side G, I. At doon sa pangalawang figure, ang included side dyan ay side H, I. At ang 
huli ay meron tayong side G, H. So, yan ang ibig sabihin ng included side. Saan natin gagamitin ito? Diyan napapasok yung ating mamayang postulate. So, practice tayo sa pag-name ng included side. Kung meron tayong angle Y at angle E, ano ang included side? Tama. Yan ay side Y, E. Kung si angle E at angle S naman, ano ang included side? Yan, side E, S. At ang angle S at angle Y, ang kanilang included side ay S, Y. Side S, Y. So, dyan po papasok yung angle side angle or ASA postulate. If two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So, tulad nito. So, if we have angle A congruent to angle D and side AB is congruent to side DE, and angle B is congruent to angle E, we can say, using the included side, remember the included side and the angle side angle, we can say that the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And we have the last postulate, the AAS or angle angle side. Uh, uh, not postulate, rather. This is actually theorem. So, it is already proven. Theorem. So, if two angles and a non-included side, take note the term, non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the corresponding non-included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So, example, if we have angle A congruent to angle D and angle B is congruent to angle E, and the last will be side BC is congruent to side EF. BC and EF are the non-included sides. So we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Okay, take note of this. There is no such thing as an SSA postulate. And there is no such thing as an AAA postulate. Okay? So, base sa mga pinaliwanag natin, hindi natin kailangan lahat yung anim na corresponding parts. Okay? So, the congruence postulates only are SSS, ASA, SAS, AAS. The AAS is actually a theorem. So, let's do practice. So, name that postulate when possible. So, the first figure could be SAS. Second figure, we have ASA. Third figure, the SSA. But then, there is no such thing as SSA. And the last figure, we have SSS. Next, this is AAA. But then, there is no such thing as AAA postulate. ASA, SAS, and SSA. Again, there is no such SSA postulate. Okay, so using reflexive property, we can say this as SAS. And we know that vertical angles are congruent. We can say this is also SAS. And SAS, and for the last we have SSA, but then there is no postulate as SSA. Questions? Okay, so paki type na lang sa ating comment box kung may mga tanong kayo or clarification. So for your assignment, kindly indicate the additional information needed to enable us. To apply the specified congruence postulate. Thank you.